Okay, I think we are live. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I greet you, my beloved brothers and sisters, in the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom, shalom. Welcome, Ja Rastafari. Greetings, dear beloved brothers and sisters, men and women, ladies and gentlemen, all around the globe, wherever you are viewing us this evening, welcome to another episode of the Image a Nation show. My name is Brother Leo Muhammad, and sitting next to me is my beloved sister and wife, Sister Claudia Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, family, and welcome to the Image and Nation show. And thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Praise be to Allah. Thank you very much, Sister Claudia. Well, dear family, welcome, welcome, welcome. Don't forget what we always say. Let a friend, a family member, a loved one know that the Image and Nation show is live right now on Zoom and also on YouTube. Let us know, dear family, if everything is as it ought to be, that the sound is good, that you can hear us well, and also that you are receiving what we are showing clear and without any issues. Let us know also, dear family, where you are in the world. What part of the world are you? What country are you in? Where are you tuned in from this evening for another episode of the Image and Nation show? We are very interested in such things. Also, dear family, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Image and Nation show, which you can find on the Nation of Islam London Study Group. Uh, our website on YouTube. Check it out and look at some of the other shows and other things that we've been doing over many years on behalf of our community around the world. We are a people who are about the business of change. We do not believe that nothing, that everything is so permanent as never to change. We believe that everything should change as the scripture says, I will make all things new. And not just things, inanimate objects, dear family, but we as a people can institute change in our lives. And this is what we are all about. Don't forget the Image and Nation show. We want you to begin once again to use that God-given power that's called imagination for you to be able to see for yourself, to vision for yourself and a whole new reality as opposed to the limited reality that this world would have designed for us to think that we are limited and that we cannot extricate ourselves from the box that we have been placed in. Dear family, we want you to image a nation. We want you to see all that you can see and Please do not underestimate the power of the imagination. It is a very, very powerful thing that we've been given by Almighty God, and we ought to begin using it in our lives like we've never used it before. Because if you can see it in your mind's eye, then you can make it a reality. Welcome to episode 42 of the Image a nation show 42 and it is part two of our title from last week the wrath of god part two of the wrath of god dear family and uh, as i've said again uh, i'm going to emphasize i'm not rushing it because there is so much and I, I, i'm going to also just go over a couple of the things that we touched on last week just to remind us because it's important and you see Again, sometimes you can read a book, and by the time you get to the end of the book, you can hardly remember what you read. Sometimes we watch a movie, and then we watch the movie again at another stage, and we say, wow, I missed that the first time around. And so sometimes, you know, dear family, and it's not really sometimes, it's all the time, 
uh, repetition is very, very important. You know, we have to uh, do what we do over and over and over again. That is why we have to pray every day. That is why we do the things that we do in a repetitious fashion as human beings. You know, you can't go to work just one day. You know, you've got to go to work continuously if you're going to keep that finance coming in and you are going to be able to keep the walls at bay by paying those bills. And we can go on and on. Everything really grows through the process of repetition. We've got to repeat. We've got to go over. We've got to be reminded. You know, in the Holy Quran, which is the book of scripture of the Muslims, it says, surely man is made to forget. You see, and because we're made to forget, because we are forgetful beings, we need to be reminded. And one of the names of the Holy Quran is the reminder. And our leader, our teacher, our guide, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan Muhammad, one of his titles is a divine reminder because he is constantly reminding us of the things that we need to really be cognizant of if we are to be successful. And so, dear family, I make no apology for repeating things that I may have said before because it is a methodology in order to get us to that point where something becomes concrete in our lives as opposed to it being fleeting, something that we just say once and then you know we think that because we have uh, touched uh, something one time that we've got it locked down or that we know it. No, dear family, you've got to go back over and over and over these things in order to drill it in, in order for you to really uh, become familiar to the point where it becomes your nature. It becomes second nature. It becomes your way of life. This is the purpose of what we do on the image a nation show. So once again, dear family, I hope you are all good. I hope you are well. I pray that if there are any of you who are not at your best, who are not feeling at your best, who are ailing for one reason or another, we pray that Almighty God Allah will bring a healing into your life. We pray that those who are not feeling 100%, that you will be inspired uh, to really get up and do something about that condition, that you will be inspired to do that which is necessary to bring about optimum health and well-being back into your life. Because, dear family, I often my wife and I often remark on you know this whole concept of health and well-being, and we say all oh, praise is due to Allah. We, we feel so blessed. Don't we? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, that we have health, you know, good health, because it's not something that we should take for granted. Yeah, sure. And it's not something that everyone has. And so, you know, I do pray for all of us who may have some ailment, some issue right now that we are battling. And I pray that we will come through. And just to say that, that saying that your health, that is the true wealth. Absolutely. Well, well, you, literally, it's it's like one and the same word. That's right. Health, health and wealth. wealth. It, it's uh, when you when you break it down and you really study it in terms of its root, it's one and the same thing. Health and wealth. And then there's a scripture that says that in the final day, um, a man will give away all of his wealth to have good health. That's right. And that's how interchangeable the two things are. You see, because without good health, you can't enjoy That's right. wealth. You see what I mean? So, you know, some of us, we put too much store, I think, in money mm -hmm. and material things as opposed to great health. Because if, we, if we're really healthy, we, we actually are very wealthy. That's right. Because you can have all the money in the world. But when you have bad health, you can't enjoy. You don't enjoy life. Can't enjoy it, man. You're stressed. It's Horrible. not enjoyable. Yes. But, my brother, before you get into your subject, okay, I've got a question from one of our YouTube family. Go ahead. And that is, why, um, where is it? 
Why are you no longer speaking on the streets in the UK? Why are we no longer speaking on the streets in the UK? Well, in truth, we are. Uh, but we're just, you know, I mean, you've got to remember that we're just coming out of this so-called COVID thing. And that really put a stop to so much activity. But I can assure you um, to the questioner that uh, we recognize the importance of the street. And if it be the will of God, you will be seeing us sometime this year back on the streets. I mean, we're going to be out in Brixton on the 1st of August. And you're going to be seeing us more and more uh, taking to those streets, talking to our people, reasoning with our people in the public arena, because we know the importance of being out among our people. I was blessed yesterday to be at an event, a fundraising event, where some of our brothers and sisters trying to raise monies to secure a building that we can call our own in the Black community in the United Kingdom. So, you know, slowly but surely, we are getting back into our outdoor activities we can't do everything via zoom and youtube but yeah that's the answer to your question uh we have been as a result of the covid uh problem uh you know doing so much more online but we do intend uh, by the grace of allah to be back out on the streets was that the was that it for the yeah. time being sister claudia and they said thank you brother okay fantastic Okay, dear brothers and sisters, the wrath of God, part two. So let's uh, re recap. Last week in episode 41 of the Image and Nation show, entitled The Wrath of God, we began by pointing out the strange and freakish weather as one of the signs of the wrath of God. Also, we highlighted... <clears throat> Uh, white on black murders. We explain uh, that because, you know, again, just very quickly, there is no pattern, there is no history of black on white murder, okay? But we, we can show at no limit of time a clear pattern and a clear history of white on black murders. Black on black murders, yeah, we can show a, a lot of that because that's going on big time all over our planet. Black deaths in custody, whether the custody is in the mental institutions, the prisons, the police stations, whatever. So many of our people constantly losing our lives, uh, being stopped on the street by the police and then shot down. And you name it, we are constantly losing our lives whilst in the custody of the so-called authorities. Uh, we also said uh, from episode 40, that failure to reinstate the three missing scientists. If you remember, that was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, failure to reinstate the three missing sciences of mating, finance, and warfare will also mean that we ourselves can be the cause of the wrath of God. Understand this, dear family. God has come to uh, extricate you and I from the condition that we find ourselves in. However, if we insist on staying in the said condition and refuse to heed the warning, heed the word of God, we ourselves are in danger of incurring the wrath of Almighty God Allah. Make no mistake about it. It is important that you understand. And I, you know, I've got to tell you the truth, family. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has declared on a number of occasions that it's going to take more than teaching to raise our people up to where we have to be. You know, the time and what must be done is gonna take more than teaching. He said, unfortunately, there is a chastisement on the way, even for us who many of us think that we've been chastised enough, but evidently we haven't because many of us are very, very stiff necked, hard hearted and stubborn when it comes to heeding the word and doing the right thing. Dear family, we provided evidence from the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse 13 and 14, that we are the only people on the face of the earth who fulfill that scripture and the promise of judgment of the people who enslaved us. 
You should know the scripture, dear family, where Abraham is told that his seed will be a stranger in a strange land for 400 years. And then God promises that at the end of that time, he would come and judge those people, that nation who his people would serve for 400 years of hard task and hard labor. We showed from the Holy Quran, chapter 94, verses 5 to 8, that Almighty God Allah is not wicked or unjust to his people because through his natural way of doing things, his promise is always fulfilled in the following way. And what is that way? It says, after difficulty comes ease. Dear family, you know, I, I, I would implore all of you to really think about that time when you were in trouble in your life. Think about that time when you had a situation and you thought, oh my God, how am I going to get through this? How am I going to get? And you came through it and you are here now today with us. And there was that difficulty. But then after that difficulty, you had a period of ease uh, where you literally could breathe a sigh of relief and recognize that you had come through something. And that's a pattern that you will find in life. Again, I always use this example. You know, when you go to the hospital and you look at the life support machine, um, you don't want to see a flat line. You don't want to hear Doo! and see a line that's flat on that horizontal plane because that represents death. But the, 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 the symbol or the activity that represents life is going up and down. There's a doot, 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 and it's going up and down. It's peaks and troughs. It's ups and downs. See, that's the nature of life. Life is about climbing mountains, coming down the other side, climbing yet another mountain, coming down the other side. And believe it or not, it's this activity that actually proves that we are fully alive. We've got to have challenges in life that we have to overcome that actually proves and demonstrates that we are fully living our lives. Those of us who think that life should be about laying on a beach. Right. Oh, man, <laughs> that's not what it's about, dear family. Go that's ahead, right. sister. I was going to say, but that's how we've been brought up to think. Oh, ease. Yeah, ease. Yeah. That, you know, if you're going through trial, then you're wicked. Or, or God, God hates love you. you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And it's so key what you just said with that machine, with the life support machine represents our ups and downs. That's but right. once you're down, you must always go come back on, up. Come on. The cream will always rise, rise to, to the, the top. top. And that's us, the that's cream. Right. That's right. That's right. Beautiful. So, dear family, you know, this is what we were dealing with last week. And we are continuing this week with our subject matter, the wrath of God. Uh, we looked at the book of Luke last week, chapter 9, verse 23 to 25, and how we are to follow God by the denial of self. Okay, what do you mean the denial of self? Well, that selfish ego, all right? Not that you uh, negate yourself, but you deny putting yourself like you are all that it's about and that there is no power greater than yourself. There is no God, or even there is no wife. There is no children. There is no family. There is no nation. There is no community. Come on, man. We, we can't. We, did you know that the, the human being is called a social being? That we are social by nature, and we cannot live antisocial by thinking that it's just all about mm -hmm. us as an individual and how so i said and how we are to follow god by the denial of self the selfish ego and picking up our own cross we are also warned that if we attempt to save our life because of fear or cowardice we will lose it but if we are willing to give up our life for truth and the sake of god our life will be saved my i mean you know Sometimes when, I, when, when these points come up, I could really stop and just spend a long time. I'm not going to do that, dear family. But there is a tremendous principle in that. In, you know, when we're so cowardly that we're constantly trying to, you know, it's my life, my mm -hmm. life, you're on your way to losing it, man. But when you're willing to give it up, 
because of that greater principle. The principle I'm talking about is the principle of truth and the principle of God who gave us the life in the first place. Then that life will be preserved. Let me give, let me give you an example. Hey, we're taught that Jesus of 2000 years ago was crucified, that he died. And you know, the Christians love to say he died for us, but okay, think about it. That's 2000 years ago. There is not a day that goes by that that man's name is not being mentioned somewhere on the planet. Why? Because he's not dead. He lives. His life was saved. His life was preserved. Why? Because he was willing to give it up in order to preserve the life of his fellow human being. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, one of the reasons why we love that man so much is because that man has given his life. <laughs> Understand what I'm saying to you. He has given his whole life to the liberation of Black people. And whether we really appreciate it or not, that man's name will live forever. You will never get rid of Farrakhan because of what he has done on behalf of his people. And then the question is asked in that scripture that we looked at, for what should it profit a man if he should gain the whole world yet lose his soul? And that's important again, family, where some of us think that again, it's all about what we've got, you know, our bank account, our house, our car, all of our bits and pieces that we think are so important whilst at the same time we become a soulless individual a soulless people a people who have no um, energy of god of righteousness within ourselves we are just empty uh, vessels because we have managed to accumulate a lot of things but in truth we're empty and devoid of that most precious thing which is called or you can use many different titles for it, but it's called the soul. That's right. And this world also, it's a godless society. So it's made us think, okay, if I get the pair of shoes, I'll be happy. If I get the car, I'll be happy. If I get the house, I'll be happy. But once we get all these things, we're still not happy because exactly. not feeding on the true essence of God. Yes. It can't satisfy you, can no, it? No, it can't. It, those things cannot satisfy for, for a minute. That's right. Okay, for a minute, but it's but it but what what it demonstrates, and uh, uh, you know, I'm hoping that there's some people out there who have got money, who are listening to what I'm saying, because the money people will tell you, see, because people think, yeah, you know, those of us who are broke, those of us who haven't got money, we think, ah, oh, man, if I just it's had what me. that. Yes. No, <laughs> no, beloved family, they are no more happy than you, in the sense that if you think that the happiness is coming from that money or those mm -hmm. material things no dear family did you know that we have to learn how to be happy regardless of what we have and then if you're a happy person if you know what true happiness is and you can carry it with you when you've got money then yeah you're happy oh, sure. but don't think that it's the the money or the no, material no. thing object that's going to actually no. make you happy that's right and like even with the weather, what we've been experiencing, lovely hot sun. Yeah, but it's turned a bit funny, Claudia. No, we've only had two days. It is a bit funny now. It's quite, it feels like it's autumn it's now. It's weird. It's yeah, just weird. It's cooled down. But yeah. during that lovely, beautiful sunshine, us, us as believers have to be careful how we think, mm. you know, because at night, you actually feel like you're being tortured because it's so hot. So but hot. you just mm. have to be quiet, mm -hmm. ride for it and say it aloud. Get me <laughs> through this heat because it's so uncomfortable. Mm. But you have to say praise be to Allah for blessing us with life to get through it. And we have to be patient. Yeah. And I mean, you know, there are hardships in life, but, but you know, but it's how come you on. handle it. Yeah, but exactly. But, you know, a hot night, a few hot nights, come on. That's not, a, but you know, some people are really- No, they, they're crying. Really crying, yeah, really crying. complaining, wow. Yeah, they're crying. But you know, again, remember that there's another man on the planet somewhere who wishes he could have a hot night. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody's freezing cold. Somebody's on the street, living on go. the street. So you have to always thank God. Yes. For all the blessings yes. that he gives us daily, every second mm. of the day. 
That's a blessing. Praise God. Praise God. So, dear family, we also uh, looked at uh, um, the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 26, where, uh, once again, we are warned in the book uh, that if we are ashamed of God and his words, then he's ashamed of us. All of this we touched on last week. Okay, meaning that when he and his angels are made manifest in the clouds of heaven, the mothership and the baby wheels, displaying great power and glory, we will be left basking in our shame. I just want us to think, see, because I know that some of us are a bit still nervous about talking about the mothership, That's talking right. about God, a, a living God who came and talked to uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad face to face. The God says, if you're ashamed of me and my mm. words, mm. see, when that son of man appears in the clouds displaying power and glory, he'll be ashamed of us That's too. Right. Okay? So be careful, dear family. We have to become a lot bolder in declaring the presence of God. Right. And not only that, you know, in terms of Allah coming in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, but what about Allah coming in the person of yourself, of myself, of us? Because God is man and man is God. Right. And ye are all God's children of the most Hi, God. That's what he came to make us into gods. He didn't come, dear family, for us to just be looking around for somebody to worship. He came to teach us the true nature of ourselves, the true knowledge of self, and that is that we are one with the creator of the heavens and the earth. I hope, uh, dear family, that you are all getting this, and I hope that it makes sense to each and every one of you who are currently tuned in to the image a nation show i'm having a little bit of trouble with my cursor here uh, it, it disappears sometimes but uh, we are back uh dear family finally last week we looked at a scripture found in the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verse 6, where God sends fiery serpents among the people to bite the people. And as stated last week, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has given us the understanding that the fiery serpents are, in fact, angry mm -hmm. white people. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I wanted to emphasize that again this week, because, again, I know with us, you know, see, we... We, we, we really want to conjure up in our mind snakes, mm. real snakes mm. biting the people. It's like those of us who, you know, read the scripture of Adam and Eve in the garden. And God says, you know, you can eat of all these trees, but of this tree in the center of the garden, do not eat. Leave it alone. The day you eat of it, you will surely die. Mm. And then... A snake comes and whispers to Eve, no, man, God is trying to trick you. If you eat it, you're not mm. going to die, whatever. But how many of us see, we, we, we literally are visualizing a walking, talking That's right. snake. That's right. Dear family, it's not talking about a walking, talking snake. But it is talking about a human being with snake-like characteristics. One who twist and bends and turn spineless mm -hmm. got no not upright but slips and crawls and whispers go yeah, ahead but on that point why is it so important for the white man to feed our children cartoon yeah why? no no but it's real <laughs> it's real i mean and and again i i know that for a lot of us sister claudia we don't even appreciate just how powerful uh, a role those cartoon right. characters play in our children's lives and we expose our children to these things from an early stage and whether we really appreciate it or not as the child matures they've got a cartoon mentality That's right. and they literally think that you know on reality is real mm. on real things can happen That's right. and so therefore 
you know, don't be surprised you get an adult now and uh, we're scared of our own shadow because we've been mm -hmm. brought up in on reality. And so this is, this is talking about angry white people who are going to bite us, mm -hmm. who are going to sting mm -hmm. us, who are going to force us back into the arms of Almighty God, Allah. Go ahead. But sister. you can actually feel that white people are angry. Yes. You can, just the way they look at us. Getting yeah. more and more angry. Yes, we were in the store or the shop yesterday. Do you remember that yes, this yes. white man, he refused to serve me. Yes. <laughs> he looked at me mm -hmm. and then he walked away from the till mm -hmm. and just was chatting with his other colleague. And mm. I was thinking, oh, so you really want to go down mm -hmm. that road, mm -hmm. oh. So that, that's how you lot still are. That's how you're moving. They're so jealous. They're just so jealous when they see black people. Yes. That we're still, despite what they do to us. Yes. We're still multiplying. We're still alive. <laughs> we're still functioning only by the grace of Allah. That's right. That's right. That's that's some heavy stuff. And um, you know, again, I don't know. Do we appreciate that uh, we're actually in a, a, a contest? You know, I often use the term war that we're at war as mm -hmm. a people and that we've got people warring against us but right. how many of us appreciate it and we're we're always looking for respite that's right. from our enemy we're that's always right. looking for mercy yes yes we always expect mercy from somebody who hates our very hates shadow us. that's right <laughs> that can be filmed murdering us My it's goodness. on film and then you know they get off yes so why would we think better of them yes wow that's their nature yeah, you're kind of like you. You 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 oh, you're your No, no, no. But it's all good. It's all good. It's all. Sister Claudia's jumped right ahead okay, in okay. the script. No, no, because I haven't showed her. I, I, we don't discuss what I'm going to talk about. My sister just sits next to me. She's been looking at some ideas herself or whatever. But it just goes to show. You know what we say? People say, "Oh, great minds think alike." It's not great minds think alike. It's rising, rising into the one mind. Yeah rising into the God thinking mind, of God exactly there's, a, naturally there's only one mind that's right there's only one mind so dear family we concluded last week by leaving you with this okay can you remember um let me just go back one here because that came off a little bit too quick nearly 30 years ago the mask of British civility slipped and the whole world saw what black people have known all our lives, that white supremacy mm. and institutional racism is a reality in the UK. This is real, uh, dear family. And, you know, uh, before we go further, let us just, let us just go into this next phase and then we will continue. Imagination, promoting and advertising goods and services for the benefit of our community. Please take note of the following, dear family, and support. Okay, Nia's Bean Pie. Visit Instagram at Nia's Bean Pies or call 07956 one two seven nine seven five that's zero seven nine five six one two seven nine seven five and check out the tasty beautiful nia's bean pie it is a sweet that's healthy all at the same time there's not that many sweet things that you can purchase these days that are equally healthy but i can assure you this bean pie is sweet and healthy all at the same time. Dear family, visit www.p2bb.uk or londonstudygroup19.org order your proud to be black t-shirts and caps and mugs and say it like you mean it, P2BB, which translates proud to be black. Visit the tribe, www.tribenation2019.com and pick up one of the garments 
that are on sale to promote the fact that you recognize and you are part of that modern tribe, that progressive people who are doing great things today. Also, dear family, visit www.naturesharproducts.co.uk and try the moisturizing hair and scalp oil, as well as beard oil and other natural hair products. And I can, again, assure you, uh, dear family, that these hair products are truly magnificent. The feedback from the customers who have been using Nature's hair products is fantastic. And everybody reports great results in terms of healthy hair and hair growing back and hair that is more manageable. So please check out Nature's hair products and you know, try it for yourself. Dear family, this is how we left off last week and this is how we intend to continue at this time. Stephen Lawrence was murdered because he was black. Few crimes in recent times have had such a profound or long-lasting impact. Injustice, watershed, landmark are all used to describe the Lawrence case. The, the thing that makes Lawrence particularly important and why I think the Stephen Lawrence case is the case that is uh, apparently changed the nation is because it hinges on... So this um this individual commentator his name is paul um anderson walsh i believe paul anderson walsh and uh, he's saying basically you know the lawrence case changed the nation my question would be how how did it change the nation see again this is the you know this this is the type of opinion that many of us in the black community have that because you know this thing was such a big case to some degree uh, you know it became so well known that somehow that means that this nation was changed something else so the the, the, the murder itself was just jaw-dropping and uh, nobody could grasp that but what followed was just beyond anybody's imagination. I remember the Stephen Lawrence case very well. It was the day before uh, my daughter's birthday. So it was the 22nd of April, 1993. And I remember, I remember it extremely well. It's hard, to, it's hard to describe it in any other way as just almost sport. Um, I, suspect, I suspect for an American audience you would be able to really relate to this and perhaps this is why it was so shocking because although we, it wasn't in any sense a kind of, you know, a, a down south Mississippi lynching, it, it wasn't far off. This is the bus stop where Stephen Lawrence was brutally stabbed to death in a savage racial attack. Today the bus stop's being changed, there are even new benches, but it does nothing to diminish the fact that this point represents the very worst. So you see, that's the point. The bus stop has been changed, the benches were changed, but does that mean that something changed? Mm. No, dear family, nothing's changed. In British race relations. You had uh, two boys, Stephen and his friend, who were uh, at a bus stop in South East London one evening, and uh, they were uh, part of an absolutely unprovoked attack. Um, where uh, one of the boys escaped, Stephen Stanley didn't, and five uh, young white men um, murdered him. And as we discovered, as the story unfolds, and uh, the, the press and the media were able to get behind the story of the uh, of Stephen's murderers, um, these people had practiced these kinds of assaults and killings in their bedrooms, and also it was just the most extraordinary thing. Um, and it was the premeditated nature of it, I think, people found so very, very difficult. In the days following Stephen's murder, the police received several tip-offs from all sources. So did you hear that? He said in the days following Stephen's murder, the police received several tip-offs. It wasn't even days. 
within hours of this murder, uh, the police received all five of these individuals' names because they were known for attacking black people. They were known for their racism. They were known for their hatred and their mob attacks on black people in that area. And yet, having received these tip-offs, uh, nothing happened, okay? And uh, the family was just waiting around for literally uh, weeks upon weeks upon weeks, waiting for the police to act on what they had uh, been told and what they were given, even on one occasion, when the family gave them the names of the individuals written down on a piece of paper, it was observed by a family member, one of the Lawrence family members, the policeman screwing the piece of paper up in his hand and basically disposing of it. This is the type of reality that we're talking about. Within days, they had been given the names, the same names, 26 times, and yet they failed to act. Now, I want you to just imagine that's the reverse. Imagine that's a black gang that they're getting the same names oh. <laughs> the police have been told <laughs> and what would happen under those circumstances. Well, from the crime was committed. If they would have been arrested straight away. I mean, you know. Yeah, they wouldn't have got away. Yeah, that's right, beloved. <laughs> that's right. But this is why we are dealing with this subject the and we call it the wrath of god because even though there are many of us who think that you know these people are going to get away with what they've done there is no escape no, dear family no. there is such a thing as divine retribution pointed to the same five suspects brothers neil and jamie are caught gary dobson luke knight and david norris their gang were named 26 times as Stephen Lawrence's killers in the hours following his murder. Lawrence handed in her own list of suspects, only to see the officer first fold it up and then screw it into a ball in front of her. The Met's failure to respond to initial reports would prove to be the first in a string of injustices against the Lawrence family that spanned more than two decades. A couple of weeks later, and still no arrests. The Lawrence family had a press conference airing their frustrations that not enough was being done to catch the killers. Two days later, they met with Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela paused on a visit to Britain. I hope, dear family, that you are looking at the face of Neville and Dorian Lawrence, the parents of Stephen, because again, what we've got to appreciate about this is the nature of demoralization. Mm. It's the nature of a family being ripped apart mm. and then having the evil of the murder of a son mm. being compounded by witnessing the police and the authorities doing nothing. Right. And in fact, worse than that, looking at you, the family members, as you're the criminals. Mm -hmm targeting you like right. you're the criminal under the circumstances instead of actually going after the murderers mm -hmm. of your child. This family began to be ripped apart. And, you know, Nelson Mandela at that time was the flavor of the month because of the breakdown of the apartheid regime and the fact that Mandela had been released after 27 years of incarceration in that apartheid regime of South Africa, literally taking racism onto a whole nother level and evil onto a whole nother level that was happening in South Africa, supported by the British government, supported by Margaret Thatcher, who refused to impose sanctions on uh, the apartheid regime because she said it would hurt the black people more because hmm. she cared so much about us. But understand what I'm saying, uh, dear family. This is the uh, this was actually an embarrassment for the government because Mandela flew into the UK and went and saw the Lawrences, mm. and so now the, you know his high profile caused the media to have to look at the Lawrences 
where they were trying to sideline the Lawrences and basically, you know, sweep the whole murder under the carpet and forget about it, Mandela highlighted it uh, by talking into it. And so therefore the devils were uh, uh, um, forced to some degree to at least address it at some point in the media. To publicly shake the Lawrence's hands. In private, they talked, he listened, when no one in authority hmm. would. We are very used to this type of thing where life is regarded as cheap in South Africa. And, uh, but nevertheless, uh, it's a sense of disconcern that it should happen in a country like Britain. So we had these two huge problems. We had this issue of a, a young man in a London street who could be murdered. But in, a diff, in addition to the murder, uh, we, we were confronted with this extraordinary notion of the ineptitude of the police inquiry that was motivated by race. It's a racist society that it doesn't matter um, as for a black person, that is, it doesn't matter what standard of life you try to achieve for yourself, it makes no difference in cases like this. So I hope you can hear from Doreen Lawrence. She was very clear. She was very articulate. She knew exactly what she was saying. From her perspective, this was a racist society and it didn't matter what strata of life you came from. If you were black, you were subject to this type of racism. She was very, very clear in those early days. You are treated as if you're a criminal right from the start. In 1994, a year after the murder, covert video filmed by the police over several days in... This is the, the killers. Okay, and I've seen this video before where, I've even, where you, they've even got a sound and you hear them talking about black people and calling us all of the ugly names and boasting and bragging about how they stab us and what they want to do to us and these type of things. This is a, a surveillance video where you can see these, these killers practicing and enjoying the idea of brutalizing and killing black people, yet this is one year on from the murder of Stephen Lawrence and still there was no action from the police. One of the suspect's apartments showed the gang using knives and making violent, racist remarks. With the investigation going nowhere and a growing sense that the system had failed them, Stephen's parents took matters into their own hands. In 1996, Doreen and Neville Lawrence took out a private prosecution against three suspects. This was... Imagine. Things got so bad, the authorities failing to support this family and act and prosecute these perpetrators that they literally had to take out a private prosecution themselves. I mean, this is unprecedented, even according to, you know, the, 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 the news media. I think they even mentioned it in this particular program. Um, this was like the first time that people had had to do this. A, a, a criminal private prosecution in over a century in the UK. It was unheard of, but this is the, 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 the length to which the Lawrence family had to go in order to try to get some modicum of justice. The first private prosecution for murder in the UK for more than a century. But the Lawrences would once again leave without justice. The judge directed the jury to return not guilty verdicts. Identification evidence was ruled inadmissible. Did you hear that? The judge directed the jury to return verdicts of not guilty because identification evidence was ruled inadmissible. I mean, you know, I mean, this is the, the don't forget that these individuals were identified within hours of the murder and their names were given to the police in excess of 26 times, okay? And you've seen some of their activities yourselves and there was so much more in truth, but somehow this judge was given other information which 
deemed the evidence of identification of these murderers inadmissible. This is the type of thing that black people face in the United Kingdom. And there was not enough other evidence to justify the prosecution. The three suspects were acquitted and the entering of not guilty verdicts meant they could not be tried again. <laughs> when you look at the body language of Neville Lawrence and Dorian Lawrence, you see them crying so much. You see Neville, his head down all the time. I mean, we, we, I don't think we really understand what it means, one, to lose a child, but then to have that thing compounded mm. like that, whereby you must feel so helpless mm -hmm. in the face of this type of system that appears to be upholding the murderers. Mm. I mean, you know, I can't even begin to imagine what that must feel like for that family, but I know that that family went to hell and back. Mm -hmm. That's right. Did you want to say anything? No, it, well, it just makes me think that that saying, God help us, you know, you could just roll it off your tongue, God help us. Hmm. But that is the only person that can help us, God, isn't it? And that's why the Minister Farrakhan is so key. That's right, beloved. And that's why we need God. You that's see, because right. again, we're not talking about some spooky no, God not family. A spook. Not a spook. A real live God that has power to counter the devil. That's right. But we got to line up with God, man. We got Ooh. to be with God. We got, got to, to be, be obedient. We got to be God like. That's right. That's right. We've Ooh. got to follow God's law. Come on, man. That's right, my sister. I, I think one of the things that makes the racism argument such an interesting one is that there is a there, there is the difference, I think, between individual racism and institutional racism. So, and I think that um, most people would be askance at the idea of being accused of being racist. Uh, but because we live so comfortably in a racist system, it's difficult to reconcile those two points. Because self-evidently the system is racist. In 1997, the Lawrence family registered a formal complaint with the Police Complaints Authority about the Met's handling of the investigation. Soon after, the Daily Mail, a national newspaper, ran a front page accusing the men of killing Lawrence and challenging them to sue for libel. I think that I think the Daily Mail's involvement was really very surprising. If you think Yeah, this uh, Paul Anderson um, Walsh talks about it being very surprising what the Daily Mail did because, you know, I, I don't know if anybody knows the, the politics in this country, but the Daily Mail is traditionally seen as a right wing paper. And of course, you know, as black people, we're not supposed to be with the right wing and the right wing is traditionally not with us. But this right wing paper put on their front page the, the five accused suspects and basically called them murderers and challenged them to sue the paper, which of course they never did because they know that they're as guilty as sin. But the point is, and you know, I'm just picking up on what this brother was saying because you see, and he goes on to compare, uh, you know, this Daily Mail activity as like Fox News in America and CNN. Again, Fox is supposed to be. Uh, the opposite to us as black people and CNN is supposed to be our kind of news, left wing and we, we're more left wing people. See, this is, a, this is a, a traditional problem that we have in the black community, dear family, where we think that there's one set of white people who are with us and another set that's against us. When in reality, even if you look at the history of say the Ku Klux Klan, and all, they were always Democrats. It was always the Democratic Party that was pushing all this, but somehow they've got black people running and embracing Democrats, regardless of what they do to us. It was Clinton, the Democrat, and Biden, the Democrat in their uh, administration, who brought in those draconian laws, three strikes and you're out, which destroyed hundreds of thousands of black men and black families up and down the country of North America. But 
you know, this, they've got us thinking that, oh, you know, th these people can do no wrong and pointing the finger at the, the, the right wingers, you know, Trump, hate Trump, hate Trump, hate Trump. Whether you know it or not, whether you want to believe it or not, Trump did a lot more for black people while he was in office than most of these Democrats have ever done. But because we, we, we drank the Kool-Aid and we, 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 we swallowed, you know, all of the propaganda, then we, you know, it's just, we just hate Trump, Trump, it's Trump, Trump is the one, who, we, 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 honestly, it's like, they just made us like that movie titled, I, I remember a movie titled Dumber and Dumber. And, you know, this brother is just perpetrating, as, as far as I'm concerned, the same mythology about how surprising it was. The, the simple point I will make, and I'm not Democrat, and I'm not Republican, and I'm not Labour, and I'm not Conservative. I don't believe in none of it. But what I'm saying is that from time to time, even from among the ranks of the enemy, some of them might do something on our behalf. But if we're so um blinded by some ideology which has got nothing to do with us left and right so that now uh, somebody on the right could do something for us but we are so blinded by this ideology of being on the left we, we're always left that we can't see the woods for the trees i'm just warning us to be very very careful you see because i think it was bob marley who said your worst enemy can be your best friend and your best friend, your worst enemy. So let's just be a little bit more nuanced and a little bit more open-minded and think, because I don't know what motivated the Daily Mail to do what they did, but what they did was a good thing for the Lawrence family. And it, and it again opened up avenues that allowed them to pursue justice in the case of their murdered son. So, but I just I wanted to touch on that because I don't I just don't like this thing where we are pigeonholed into thinking that you know we read the Sun newspaper. Uh, sorry, we read the Daily Mirror. The, the Sun is right wing. Be quiet. Uh, uh, this both the Sun and the Mirror at the top of the pyramid they're one and the same. Mm -hmm. Democrat and Republican at the top of that pyramid they're one and the mm -hmm. same. Okay, Labour and Conservative at the top of that pyramid, they're one and the same. And they play both sides mm -hmm. and have us like a bunch of fools going crazy over one side, like this one side is on the side of Black people. When we should be on the side of God. <laughs> there you go. Remember when George Bush said, you know, you're either with us or you're with the terrorists. Well, we said no, George W. Bush, or was it George H. Bush who said, uh, you're either with us or you're with the terrorists. We said, we're not with you mm -hmm. and we're not with the terrorists. We're with God. Right. See, this is where we got to learn to stand as a people. We That's got right. to stand on the side of God and on the side of righteousness, right. not on any of these political, in any of these political camps. Mm. Think about the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail is the sort of Fox News of the UK broadcasting environment. And this was very much a, a CNN story, if, you like, if I can put it that way for you. And the fact that it was actually Fox News in the form of the Daily Mail that went to bat on this and actually published the extraordinary headline, Murderers, with a picture of the, the, these young men, um, was a massive stance. With growing interest around the case from both the media and the public, Pressure was on the newly elected Labour administration to take. Yeah, pressure was on the devil, Tony Liar, I mean, Tony Blair, okay? You know, this is Labour coming to power. But it wasn't because he was in love with black people. It wasn't because he was enamoured with us why anything was done under his party. Just understand this, dear family. Don't think that, oh, because it's Labour, uh, that, you know, this is why something moved for the Lawrences. Action. By the summer of 1997, the new Home Secretary, Jack Straw, met with the Lawrences. And soon after, the Home Office announced a judicial inquiry into the police's handling of... This is the same Jack Straw who kept and imposed the ban on the Honourable Minister Louis Farrakhan from coming into this country. So again, see, 
you, you, you just because oh they 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 announce an, an inquiry for the Lawrences, so then we all get excited like oh these people are, are, are good people. Whilst at the same time, man's keeping the man of God away from the masses of black people. Whereas if we could hear the man for ourselves in the country, our lives could literally be transformed to the point where we could all as a people start to really doing some magnificent things on mass for ourselves. So the fact that you are seemingly helping one family, what about all the black families who deserve to hear from who we want to hear from as opposed to your paternalistic attitude and mentality towards black people like you're going to protect us from the honorable minister lewis farrakhan by calling him all of these ugly names and banning him from coming into the united kingdom case this inquiry will have full powers to compel the attendance of witnesses to give evidence under oath and if they fail to do so to punish them as if it were a contempt of court. The inquiry led by retired High Court Judge Sir William McPhee. So let's just be clear, okay? These individuals had been promised that they could not, they would not be prosecuted, all right? The only punishment that was hanging over their heads is if they failed to show up, having been ordered to come and give evidence, was that they could be charged with contempt of court, which is some minor thing that you can get a few days in jail uh, if that but don't think for one minute that they were under any threat of prosecution where this um, case was concerned because the uh, case of double jeopardy had already been invoked in that in this country at that time you couldn't be tried twice for the same charge and it, it, when that case was dismissed in the high court the first time with that private prosecution, it meant that these individuals, according to the law, could not be charged with that murder again. Set for 59 days to hear evidence from 88 witnesses and produced more than 100,000 pages of documents. At the heart of this inquiry is the allegation from the Lawrences and their lawyers that racism permeated the police investigation into Stephen's death and permeates the society in which it happened. So it's become a touchstone for the black community and the outcome could point to the direction of the future of race relations in Britain. The gang came to give evidence at the public hearing, having been told they will face prosecution otherwise. A huge crowd gathered outside the hearing, hoping to get a chance to see them take the stand. And just very quickly, dear family, I mean, I could spend days on this, all right? But this, this report from Al Jazeera completely whitewashes what happened at the inquiry. But I'm going to try and just put it in a, in a brief uh, nutshell for you. Um, there were hundreds of our people locked out of this inquiry. We were inside the inquiry chamber, myself and many of the brothers and sisters from the Nation of Islam, uh, we were at least 70 strong there on this particular occasion when these individuals were showing up to give evidence. We had been specifically invited by the Lawrences, by Neville and Doreen Lawrence, because they were very concerned about these individuals coming and intimidating the process. And so they wanted to have the Nation of Islam, the FOI, uh, there to basically secure the place and make them feel reassured that they also had the ability to push back against the kind of negative energy that these individuals were going to bring. And then basically what happened was that the police being, the Metropolitan Police being the racist body that they were, what they attempted to do uh, whilst the inquiry was going on, we were securing the front door and they attempted to bring uh, the Nation of Islam into a confrontation with the police. And they attempted to stop a number of us who had left the building uh, for a brief moment to do something with some of the brothers outside. When we attempted to go back in, they then attempted to prevent us from going back into the building. And they literally physically put their hands 
on us and we had no option, no choice, but to fight against those who were trying to assault us. I'm talking about the police. And there was a altercation at the main door where we saw policemen rolling on the ground and we went into the chamber, went up the stairs into the main chamber where Macpherson was conducting uh, the examination of one of these so-called uh, killers. One of these witnesses was on the stand and we stopped the inquiry and we told Macpherson and the inquiry chamber what was going on downstairs in that the police were basically trying to prevent us from coming in who were legitimately inside. We had passes and everything legitimately inside that building. Not only that, but they had all of these people outside on the street, not able to come in while there were massive rooms. There was one massive room in particular in the inquiry chamber uh, where the people could have been to be actually observing the inquiry on screens and they had the room empty while they had the people outside lying to the people that there was no room inside. So we brought the proceedings to a standstill. There was a fight downstairs. They sprayed the area with CS gas and there was a big thing that went on for a little while there. But then the inquiry was brought to a stop. And within a few hours, all of those people who were being locked out were allowed in and the process, the, 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 the inquiry resumed. And the next day's papers, newspapers, and especially the black newspapers, there were headlines like, thank you to the nation of Islam, based on the work that we did that day in order to open up that process so that black people could actually come in and observe for themselves what was going on in there. And when the police attempted to attack us and stop us from going into the chamber legitimately, we fought back and we won the day. And so that's essentially what happened, but you don't really get to see much of that on this particular uh, uh, rendition by Al Jazeera. Do we not have that footage? Um, the, there is, the, I have seen uh, more of the footage mm -hmm. uh, that was covered, but um, I, I haven't got that here today. Okay. But uh, yeah, that's it was very powerful. Yeah, it's very powerful. It was, a, I mean, uh, believe me, I've just put yeah, in a you, nutshell, maybe one of these days. I'm not saying it properly because that was a very powerful. I know, but one of these days we may do a whole show on just what happened mm -hmm. at the Lawrence Inquiry. Bearing in mind that Hannibal House in uh, Elephant and Castle, all of that now has disappeared. All of that's gone mm -hmm. now. So that history is effectively lost because those, that infrastructure that was there, that place where that inquiry took place has all been modernized, it's all been knocked down, it's all gone. And so it's important that, you know, the, the uh, oral history is told and that we also should be, you know, recording and writing the history of what happened because, you know, you see already, you don't even see uh, much of what really happened no. on that day. When, when I start this again, you'll see uh, one uh, one of the brothers wrestling with the police, mm -hmm. and you see a little a little bit of it, but you don't really see a great deal. But it shows what happens when you stand up to say things. Absolutely, and that's what the brothers did. The Absolutely, FOI did that. Absolutely, and they were shaking in the boots. That's the police right. officers, weren't that's they? Right. That's they right. Come, they saw God. That's right. That's right. They 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 got a good lesson mm -hmm. that day when it came to you know trying to confront righteous people That's right. who were doing a righteous job on behalf of that uh, Lawrence family. Yes, yeah, because you can see just the way those two devils walked in, you know he's one of their fathers were with the police or that's Uncle Tommy in the police, that's the right. judge that's is with right. them. Everyone was on their side, that's those right. white people, all family. You see the arrogance. That's right, the yeah. arrogance, pure yeah. arrogance. Yeah. And, and, you know, the, and the police were protecting them as well, inside and outside, taking them in, taking yeah, them out. Sons, exactly. Yeah. And you say that, that, you know, that's their sons, but it, it's a very important point that you make, uh, Sister Claudia, because you see, again, and, and we're going to, I'm going to go a little bit more into this, maybe, maybe this week, but maybe next week, because I'm, I know I'm not going to finish uh, fully this week, but um, as to why they don't prosecute their killers mm -hmm. when they kill us. Mm -hmm. Because believe it or not, family, they actually want that type of energy. They want that type of person. Because remember, this is Britain we're talking about here. This is that warrior nation that has picked a fight and gone to war 
with 171 of the nations on planet Earth out of 193 or so countries on the planet, they have gone to war with 171 of them. And so they want that type of person to fight their wars. They don't want to kill that type of spirit, that killer mentality, that killer spirit that they have towards black people. They literally want to encourage that. I know some of you soft-hearted black people out there don't want to believe it. You don't believe it. I'm telling you, man, they love that type of bull, what they call British bulldog spirit because that's the kind of energy they can use when they send these rabid dogs abroad to go and fight and kill brown and black and yellow people. Understand me, I'm not mincing my words. This is the history of this country. This is what they do. And you're wondering, well, why won't they, you know, prosecute these guys? It's obvious what they've done to Stephen Lawrence because they don't want to kill the, that spirit. Okay, that's as long as they're not killing their own, mm -hmm. if they're killing us, look, man. <clears throat> and then they take them for a burger. Well, look, yeah, that one <laughs> in, America, right in America, right? <laughs> Shot and killed our people in, in the, the church. church. And right. then what did the police do? They took him and gave him a burger. They took him to a burger bar. That? Can you imagine a black man shooting down yeah. and killing a whole bunch of people <laughs> in church and then the police taking you to a burger bar okay. to get a, are you hungry, son? Is that, are you all right? How's my, your mama? My, you okay? my God. No. I mean, you know, you, you, could, you can't make this no. stuff up. You no. couldn't make this stuff no. up, man. No. But this is the reality of what we're dealing with as black people mm. in this in world. In our face. That's right, and it's in our face. Dance. At the inquest, the five suspects refused to answer questions. The inquest jury ruled Stephen had been unlawfully killed in a completely unprovoked racist attack. Tensions between the, the police, fight. the public and the suspects reached boiling point outside the court. The inquiry was adjourned for three hours after police fired CS gas on protesters. We brought the inquiry to a standstill for three hours. That's the reality of what happened because of these police thinking that they could pick a fight with the members of the Nation of Islam. The men spat and hit out at the crowd whilst police escorted them back to their vehicles. In 1999, two years after the inquiry began, McPherson made 70 recommendations. Two years after the inquiry began, okay, 1999, he's now making his recommendations. And delivered a damning final verdict. He, he concluded in his uh, really landmark uh, report um, that the Metropolitan Police Service was indeed institutionally racist. These 70 kind of you see you see the problem dear family yes of course macpherson's uh you know report was supposed to be hard hitting and he called the metropolitan police institutionally racist but what about scarman before him uh, uh, um there was a scarman inquiry and that one condemned the the the, the system as being racist and unjust and etc. And the other inquiries, and we can go, and there's always an inquiry, and there's always condemnation, and there's always recommendations. But do they do? Do they act on any of the recommendations? Does anything change? Because this is what we're talking about here, family. We're talking about the wrath of God, because where Satan is unable to give justice, see, justice is a principle of God, and justice will be given see you know the, the the devil has the as the opportunity he's got it in his hand to give but if he won't give it don't think that justice is going to remain asleep forever because it's not that's the point you see and justice will be given and it will be given by almighty god allah and even some of us won't like what we see coming on these unjust people so let's continue overarching recommendations 
were presented to the Metropolitan Police Force and the Metropolitan Police Force, um, to be honest, has been um, having a very, um, a very complicated time engaging with it. The chairman of the inquiry, Sir William McPherson, <laughs> repeated... <laughs> You know, he's even trying to be. They have had a very complicated time trying to deal with hmm. the with the with the recommendation oh, with the report. But but that's a black man trying to. It, it's so mean mouth. Mm -hmm. they've, they've had a complicated time trying to. They they, they can't implement. See, see where you're supposed to do right. You have to be righteous to do right. <laughs> and and no piece of legislation. No change of the uh, Race Relations Act 2000, some little amendment here is going to change that character, that behavior, that hatred of Black people, you see? It, it, it's deeper than a system of uh, institutions. In reality, it's got more to do with a constitution, and we're not talking about a written constitution on a piece of paper, we're talking about the nature and the character of people. Their very constitution, their very nature is where the problem lies. Go ahead. I like that night sh nightshade said, God always has the final say. Mm. They shall soon see that. Yeah, yes, that's beautiful. It is. Nightshade. Yes. God, ho God, God always, always has the, the final, final say. say. And, and I think um, um, the, the, the main lecture from uh, our headquarters mosque on Sunday mm -hmm. was after um, Islam comes after everything else has failed, mm -hmm. you see? And that's the, po that's the same point that's being right. made there. You see, you know, God allows Satan to do his worst, okay? He gives him a head start, says, mm -hmm. go on, do... You 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 run a mock, but after Satan has done his work, hmm. that's when God comes to clean up the mess. And I'm telling you, man, any of us found messy at that time, wallowing in this filth and degeneracy and making excuses for the Metropolitan Police and this wicked system, well, we will incur the wrath. He challenged Sir Paul about widespread instinctive racism within the force, but Sir Paul continually rebutted that suggestion. Um, I find it difficult after five years for the commissioner to still be saying that he felt that there was no racism or corruption involved in Stephen's case. So what's the point in having an inquiry? The, the, the inquiry chairman, a judge, finds the Metropolitan Police guilty, but the, the commissioner of police... Paul Condon, he's saying, no, I, I, I disagree. I don't believe that there's any racism. In the face of all the evidence, see, this is the reality of what you're dealing with when you're dealing with a satanic mind and a satanic system, uh, dear family. This is the reality. I, I, I feel so sad for our dear beloved sister and what she was going through over all these many years. So if that wasn't racism and it wasn't corruption, I still had me give the answer as to why Stephen Skillers are still walking free. The inquiry prompted some serious changes within the police force and led to the Race Relations Amendment Act in 2000 that strived to eliminate discrimination and promote racial equality. And, and I mean, just imagine all of the black people who have been wrongfully convicted, hmm. who, who are innocent hmm. of murder charges, who have been framed and, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, cajoled into plea bargains and pleadings and things, guilty pleas and whatever, when they've been completely and utterly innocent and people who have been framed and mm -hmm. had to go to prison for 20 and 30, 30 and some people 40 plus years in prison mm. for crimes they did not commit mm. much less you got you got guilty parties mm. just walking the streets and literally mocking they went to the inquiry refused to answer questions 
my God. This is the world, dear family, in which we live. The problem of racism is it's so deeply woven into the fabric of our society that it is by no means a simple thing to resolve. Here is the black man struggling. The problem with the racism is that it's so deeply woven into the fabric of the society. Sounds so nice, doesn't it? You're talking about the nature of some people here, mate. That's the reality. That's what you need to get mm -hmm. to. Okay, the fabric of the society. Societies are made by people. Societies come out of people. It's like saying the lie without acknowledging a liar. Hmm. You don't have a lie without a liar. Okay, you got to go to the root. Who is the liar who told the lie? But you know, we're, we're so scared, most of us scared to death Negroes, we don't want to acknowledge the liar. The inquiry may have shone light on institutional racism, but it didn't bring the result the Lawrence family so desperately wanted, the conviction of their son's murderers. In the 11 years since, there have been three murder investigations, two police reviews and a public inquiry, yet his killers still remain free. Now the Crown Prosecution Service says it's unlikely the case will ever be solved. But then in 2005, double jeopardy, the rule preventing suspects being tried twice for the same crime was scrapped. Something McPherson had recommended in his report six years earlier. Okay, so McPherson had recommended in his report that double jeopardy should be dropped. That, you know, this, law, this rule that says you can't be tried twice for the same murder. And so in 2005, it was dropped. But, but let, okay, that's great for the Lawrences, but I want you to understand something about that even. You see, because I can guarantee you that the vast majority of people who will then fall foul of that double jeopardy uh, reversal will be black people. Hmm. <laughs> understand this. So I know, it, it, and I'm not saying it was a bad thing, I'm saying, yes, it was a good thing that that happened in order that these devils could, could be pursued some more in order to bring them to justice. But understand that even like with the race relations laws that they brought in, uh, one of the first people to be prosecuted under the race relations law was a black man. <laughs> understand this, okay? And if you, if you understand the world in which we live now, where, you know, most of us have fallen for the, for the, for the okie doke that, well, everybody is racist. So now black people are being accused of being racist because we are pointing out racism. You understand? Don't forget in the nation of Islam, we're the number one racist. Why? Because we, put, we, we dare right. to point out white racism, which uh, uh, the history of which is written in the blood of black people, not something that we're making up. We can prove it at no limit of time. Hmm. But this is what you have to be mindful of, dear family. This is why, again, it's never ever about an individual or an individual family. It's about how all of this ultimately affects us as a people. But with no new evidence, this offered the Lawrence family little hope. At every turn, uh, the Lawrence case makes history. They, they literally challenged every step of the way and whatever obstacle was in the place, statue, law and so on and so forth, it, it, they just overturned it. A tiny spot of blood found on the collar of Dobson's jacket has a one in a billion chance of not belonging to Stephen. Other fibres from the dead teenager's clothing were allegedly found on a multicoloured cardigan. Using the latest forensic technology, New evidence was found during a cold case review of Lawrence's murder that tied two of the previously acquitted suspects to the case. In 2011, the trial of Gary Dobson and David Norris for Lawrence's murder begins in light of the new evidence. 
It took a long time for justice to ride out in the Lawrence case. Doreen watched the many suspects in her son's murder walk free from courts and inquiries. 19 years later, only two of them have been convicted. A failure, she said, of politicians as well as the police. It was 19 years. And who does Doreen Lawrence blame? Politicians and police. She was very clear, mm -hmm. dear family. Let's just continue. And I, I, as I said, I know this is going to continue next week. 19 years later, 19, 19 years, let me say that again, before Dobson and Norris uh, were in prison. So there are two things about that that are extraordinary. Uh, one is it took 19 years for them to be found brought to uh, brought to court again and to charge and found guilty. And two is that 19 years later, Baroness Lawrence was still as resilient and as as as, as um, committed to this as she was 19 years previously. We pay tribute to Mr. and Mrs. Lawrence's courage and dignity. This is the same Cressida Dick. OK, who was around at that time, during that time, who was uh, trying to defend the Metropolitan Police and their evil behavior that was going on. This is the same Cressida Dick that was just forced recently to resign because of more racism, because of more atrocious behavior by the Met Police. And nothing has changed. This is my point, you know. Um, she's there reading out a prepared statement, but it doesn't mean a damn thing in terms of justice for the Lawrences. They have contributed to major changes within policing, the law, and indeed within society as a whole. Doreen Lawrence continued to campaign for justice for her son, as well as for other victims of racist crime. In 2013, Doreen was awarded the title of Baroness for her relentless... See, some of us get so happy. Mm -hmm. Baroness. So what does that mean, dear family? Is that the change that we're talking about? Does that, does that fix that murder of her son now being co-opted into the House of Lords? What does that me see that woman was so strong she was so relentless in pointing out who were the wicked ones in this whole scenario that you think by them saying okay let's bring her into the house of lords let's make her a baroness do you really think that that means that somehow they've got love and respect and honor for this woman or is this a way of just getting her to shut her mouth. I just want us to think today. I just want us to think today because remember when Musa or Moses came to get the children of Israel and he said to Pharaoh, let my people go. He never ever said, let my people integrate with you. No, he said, let my people go. Not get pulled in to their system, but understand why the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the English white man is the wisest of all the Europeans. He said that the American and the German are the wickedest, yeah. but the Englishman is the wisest. Mm. I just want you to think today, dear family, as we come to a close. The community. She has been, um, you know, really, really, really uh, embedded in the psyche of this nation because of the work that she's done and the sacrifice she's paid. It, it, it's hard to explain it in terms of what it looks like, but it was, it, it was, yeah, in, in, a, in a way it was our own, it, it was our, probably the most important criminal justice struggle in terms of the black story in this country in the last however many years. Policing has long been a focal point for concerns now over... we're kneeling down, shouting, Black Lives Matter. What has changed? What has changed? 
Dear family, at this time, we're just gonna quickly have a look at this. Don't forget, check out JJ Sorrel products. Check out at Sorrel 2020 and try some of the beautiful Sorrel products uh, that are there for your consumption. Absolutely beautiful, tasty, sweet and sour. To, oh man, just sweet and savory Sorrel products. Check them out, dear family. Check out WYLA for boys and girls, age eight to 16, producing our future leaders. Visit www.wyla uk.com and be a part of that process of educating and teaching our children to be independent of a world and a system like this. Visit www.naturesharproduct.co.uk and try the beard oil, specially formulated hair butters and so much more from Nature's Hair Products. Dear family, don't forget, brothers and sisters, visit our YouTube channel, the Nation of Islam London Study Group, new LSG London Study Group. Like, share, subscribe, and also click that donation button to help us continue what we are doing here on the Image and Nation show. Dear family, next week we continue with the Image and Nation show and this subject matter, the wrath of God. Now, let's look at 30 years after Stephen Lawrence to see exactly what has changed. Our beloved sister, Sister Doreen Lawrence was given an OBE, Order of the British Empire. I mean, think about it. Do you understand what the British Empire did to black people on a global scale and how that was one of the worst things that ever happened to us as a people, the British Empire. But now you're going to give the sister a medal and that those letters after her name for what purpose? They then gave her an honorary degree. And I mean, and these are just a couple of things I'm mentioning. It just goes on and on. And then she was made a baroness and she now sits in the House of Lords. Dear family, we will continue with this process next week because, you know, when you're fighting Satan, you have to understand Satan's desire to co-opt you hmm. and to bring you into his fold while you think you're still fighting him. And so, dear family, I, I really thank you all so much, uh, you know, Next week, I'm going to show you how nothing has changed. But I thank you so much for your attendance and thank you so much for your participation. I want to hear, let's hear from Sister Claudia. Well, a question was asked, can the products that you are advertising be sent to Biafra? Can they be sent to Biafra? I, I would say I doubt it very much. It depends. Some. It depends, yeah. It depends who. Check it depends who you're, who you're ordering from. You need to check the websites because if you're talking about nature's hair products again can, can yeah, they ship to, they can ship yeah. to biafra and the clothing if you're talking about the, the clothing the tribe yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they can ship as well uh, i'm not sure about proud to be black at the moment well, yes, but, yeah ship, i mean yeah. i i guess everybody can can ship it, it, you know yeah. obviously you yeah. can't get to be high there uh, but um yeah clothing and things of that nature if you go on the website and, and make your order, I'm pretty sure that the brothers and sisters here will make it happen for you. OK, maybe a little bit different type of arrangements have to be made or whatever, but I'm pretty sure uh, whatever the obstacles are, it can be worked out so that you can get your products. Anything else? And just to say thank you so much to all of you tuning in. We don't take this for granted. We're really grateful for our family in Barbados, Biafra, the United States, and our family in the UK and Africa, all over the world. We thank you all for tuning in. Wonderful.
Thank you, dear family. Thank you for patronizing the Image of Nation show. Thank you for being with us. We look forward to touching base with you again. Same time next week, each and every Thursday, starting at 6.30, tune in to the Image of Nation show. Next week, part three of The Wrath of God. Thank you and may the creator continue to bless you and your family as I greet you, as I found you in the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum.